yeah. I don't even, I don't really have to say anything. Um, we all know it's been a while. <laughs> Oh, God. Does that make you cringe yet? Kind of makes me do it a little bit. Um, I, I honestly don't even know how to start this video. <laughs> I really don't. My friend Sierra is currently at my house visiting, but she's upstairs taking a nap, and I thought that I could take advantage of this time and um, film a video because that's something I've been needing to do. <laughs> As you guys know, I was away um, back on the East Coast visiting family for a couple weeks. I was going to try to film videos while I was there, but I just wasn't feeling it. Um, not only that, but I was really busy while I was there and I didn't want to, you know, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a way to accurately explain why I didn't film. The true reason is I had a really intense flare up with my anxiety, which sucked really bad um, because I only get to see my family twice a year. So not only was I anxious, but then the fact that I was anxious just pissed me off even more and um, made me depressed. So, cool. But the good news is I feel a lot better now that I'm back home and I'm ready to be back. Thank you guys so much for being patient and not constantly tweeting at me, harassing me for not posting because I was already doing that to myself. So I really appreciate your patience. Thank you so much. I love you. Um, yeah. Before we get into the video though, one more thing, sorry. I know everyone hates it when YouTubers draw out the intro, but hey. Y'all know that app Cameo where Cody Ko is, sorry I couldn't think of another O sounding rhyme. If you don't know what Cameo is, it's an app where you can essentially pay your favorite people on the internet to make you personalized video shout outs. You can tell them what you want them to say, what type of message you want them to send to yourself or to a friend. And it's also just a way to support your favorite creators. And I'm on there now. So if you would like a little personalized video message from me, I'll leave my link down in the description. It's $15. You don't have to, you really don't. Like, I get it. Like, I get it if you don't. But if you do, it's there. If you don't wanna buy my baby face on a shirt, I get that too. But if you don't wanna buy my baby face on a shirt, but you do wanna buy a little video shout out for me, you can do that. And don't be weird. Cause I already got some weird ones, okay? Cause I can decline them. And I will, if you're f***ing weird. So, with that being said, let's move on. Now, by this point, y'all know, my body ain't a normal body, okay? It's a body, but it has its quirks, right? One of those quirks is my lungs are really quirky. You know, they're really random and fun, and um, fun-loving quirky queens. What I'm trying to say is, it's really hard for me to walk long distances because I get really, really out of breath. So me walking through the very long halls of an airport carrying a heavy bag isn't ideal. I've done it a couple times, but <laughs> it ain't fun. You know, it's a struggle. I'm gasping by the time I reach my destination. It's a time. So because of this, I have decided that now every time I go to the airport, I get a wheelchair to take me from where you check your bag to the gate. Benefits of this, um, I can breathe and I basically get to skip the entire security line and it's a lot easier for me to not miss a flight. Downsides of this, um, it's cringy because at first glance, I look pretty normal just small, so I'm always convinced, okay, I'm always convinced, bitch, I don't know why I got up like I was about to fight somebody. I'm always convinced that when I go and ask for a wheelchair, they're gonna just be like, okay, like, right, you don't need one, you know? But thankfully, I haven't had that issue. I don't know if they're allowed to do that, if they can do that, 
But it seems like they would do that if just a perfectly healthy teen walked up to little the little stand and asked for a wheelchair, they'd be like, really, sis? But I don't know. Because, I mean, normally the only people that do the wheelchair thing at the airport are like elderly people or someone that broke their leg, you know? So me riding in a, in a wheelchair that's probably big enough to fit two of me um, can be a sight. But you know what else is a sight? Is me walking alone in an airport with a big ass backpack on my back, struggling and gasping for air. So anyway, it's usually a very easy process. Don't usually have to wait that long. But this day, this day was a little different. This story actually took place a few weeks ago when I flew from San Jose to Philadelphia. I'm not from Philadelphia, but that's just the airport they had to fly into. That's a cross country flight, which means I had to take a connecting flight. If I didn't want to take a connecting flight, I could have flown out of San Francisco, but that's a two hour drive from my house. So no thanks. So basically you go to check your bag and when you check your bag, you tell them that you need a wheelchair and they'll call someone to come and get you. You get in the wheelchair, they take you from basically right that in that exact spot, upstairs through security and to your gate. Also, this is not me saying, everybody get wheelchairs at the airport so you can skip the security line. Please don't. <laughs> Leave the wheelchairs for the people that actually need them. Then once you land at your destination, you get off the plane and there's someone waiting for you to pick you up and take you to baggage claim. My connecting flight was in Dallas, Texas. So I landed in Dallas and when I got off the plane, I noticed that there was no one there with a wheelchair waiting for me. Also, it's very important to note that I only had about 30 minutes to get to my next gate. It's not like I had two hours to leisurely make my way to my next gate. I like had to go, you know what I mean? So I asked one of the flight attendants, I'm like, hey, I need a wheelchair. My next flight is boarding in like 20, 30 minutes, I have to go. And she was really nice. She was like, okay, we have a lot of people on this plane that need wheelchairs and we don't have that many pushers, so we'll get to you like as soon as we can. And I was like, okay. You know, of course this would happen on one of the rare occasions where I have no time to get to my gate, but okay. I'm waiting there for a few minutes and then this girl comes down the jetway with a wheelchair who like, I don't know if she just didn't speak English very well, but she was trying, I think, to explain to the flight attendant, who seemed very irritated with this woman, by the way, that they could take, get me in the wheelchair, push me up the jetway, and leave me there until someone can come get me. I could have walked off the plane, you know what I mean? That wasn't the issue, but I was like, okay. <laughs> I remember when the wheelchair pusher lady and the flight attendant were talking to each other. The wheelchair pusher lady clearly thought I was an infant, but the flight attendant knew that I was like an adult. And <laughs> I don't remember like exactly how this happened, but the wheelchair pusher lady said something that made the flight attendant say, I'm fairly sure she's not a child. And then I get in the wheelchair and like I sit down and the lady that's pushing it like leans over and she's like, how old are you, ma'am? And I just hear the flight attendant in the background just like, oh my God. <laughs> and I was <laughs> So she pushes me up the ramp, basically like 50 feet and um, leaves me there. I was expecting to just be waiting there for like five minutes and then someone would come get me and take me where I needed to be. Um, no. Surprise, no. I'm sitting there just like screaming internally because what is happening? Like I'm still very confused. So I go to the desk where um, the gate agent, I believe that's what it's called, is standing, who was clearly one of these ladies that don't take no shit from no one. But guess what, sis? Neither do I. I say that as if I like, really stood my ground in this situation, but I didn't because, hi, I'm afraid of 
most social interaction, let alone confrontation. So I go up to her and I'm like, hi. I have a connecting flight that's boarding extremely soon and I need a wheelchair to take me to the gate. And she's like, oh, okay, well, I'll get that set up for you. And I'm like, no, like, they already know, but they're making me wait for some reason. And she just snapped. And she just goes, they're making you wait for the simple reason that we have a lot of people on this plane that need wheelchairs, but not enough people to push them. That's why. And I'm just like, okay, all right, cool. Can't wait to miss my plane. So I sit down, defeated, kind of just having to wait in despair and hope that someone will just arrive from the heavens to like lift me away. What? And as I sit down, I take out my phone and look at the little flight app to see exactly how much time I have left and where exactly the gate I need to be at is. And I notice that it's in terminal A. You want to guess what terminal I was in? Not A, I was in terminal C. <laughs> I noticed the guy sitting next to me looks pretty official. I don't know if he was the literal pilot, probably not, but he looked like he was involved in the flight crew in some way, shape or form. I'm desperate at this point, okay? So I look at him and I'm like, excuse me, how far is terminal A from here? He starts giving me like walking directions and I'm like, oh, I'm waiting for a wheelchair to take me there and my flight boards in like 10 minutes. And then he just kind of goes, oh. So clearly um, it was quite a far trek. So he's like, hold on one second, I'll be right back. And bless this man's heart, y'all. I literally would have missed my flight if it wasn't for this guy. He gets up, goes away, comes back. A few minutes later, like two minutes later, a guy with a wheelchair comes to save me. So I thank the mystery official man. I still don't know like who he was. I thank him like 10 times, I stand up. And the guy that's pushing the wheelchair, <laughs> he was great, very nice, but I don't know what he thought I needed because he had like a backpack in the wheelchair and he's kind of just like, okay, you need someone to take you to your gate? And I'm like, yeah. So we just start walking like he's pushing the wheelchair and I'm just walking kind of behind him. And I'm just like, wait, dude, like I need to sit there. Like what? So then he's like, oh, okay. And he moves the backpack and like lets me sit down. So I guess he thought that I just needed like an escort. Um, but no, like why would I ask you to bring a wheel? Uh, anyway, when I say that there's no way I would have made this flight without the wheelchair, I mean, I literally, there's no way. It took a very long time for him to even push me in the wheelchair to the gate and he was zooming. Like he was like speed walking it. We even got to, we walked all the way down this hallway to go to the elevator. The elevator was out of order. So we had to go, we had to turn around, go all the way to the other end of the hallway, go down that elevator, then go all the way to the other end where the other elevator would have dropped us off at. Then we had to go all the way to the little tram stop, get on the tram, take the tram to terminal A. Even from getting off the tram and walking through the terminal to my gate was so long. Y'all, it was so long. <laughs> By the time we made it to the gate, my flight was already boarding. You know, it didn't just start boarding. They were very well into the boarding process. So, I would have been crying. Just thinking about it, it's making me sweat. So that's the story of how I almost got stranded in Texas <laughs> by myself with literally nowhere to go. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and for being patient with me. I'm so glad to be back. Don't forget to subscribe for new videos every week. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss every time I upload a video. Make sure you follow all my social media accounts, buy my merch if you'd like to, and book me on Cameo if you would like to. Thank you guys again so much for watching and I will see you all in my next video. Love you, bye. Ah, wait, actually, one more thing, sorry. While I was in Delaware, my mom told me about one of her coworkers' daughters 
who liked my videos. Her name is Karina, and I got to go over to her house and hang out with her for a little bit. Um, it was really, really great meeting you. Thank you for supporting me and watching my videos. Thank you for 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 watching my videos. Oh, and uh, that'll, that'll be $15. I'm just kidding.